Hi guys! I have a love for anything sparkly metallic, especially when it comes to either paint or eyeshadow. And this isn't a makeup channel, so let's talk about my sparkly paint collection. And ink, some of these are ink. A lot of these paints slash inks dilute with water, I'll try to make a note when they do. All of these swatches will be my attempt at getting them at their most opaque with one layer. We begin with the inks. I'm not really familiar with Dr. P.H. Martin's watercolors or anything else from this brand, really. This is their iridescent calligraphy ink in 11R copper plate gold, and it is pretty dang steampunk. It is a gold more on the rosy copper side. It can be reasonably opaque and it dilutes nicely in water. It has an eyedropper applicator that I got a little too trigger happy with and had to use a paper towel to sop up some of the excess. Oops. My other gold ink is the Windsor & Newton drawing ink in, well, the bottle says gold, but I've also seen it written as antique gold. In comparison to our last gold ink, this one looks almost like an olivey green. It reflects a very bright lemon yellow sparkle. It's less opaque than the copper plate gold, I think, but it also has a far thinner formula and it's harder to mix up after it settles. It dilutes fine with water, but will be very streaky if you do. Also from Windsor & Newton Drawing Ink is their silver. I think it's also called aluminium silver on the box. This stuff is probably the most opaque of them all. It nearly covers the black completely in my dried swatch. It is a very cool toned silver, and it also feels more metallic than sparkly. It's almost like you're painting with liquid metal rather than metallic paint. It doesn't have as much sparkle as the others, but it's still very, very pretty. I have two paint palettes to show you, and the first is the Fine Tech Pearlescent Colors set. They are 12 pans of, quote, highly pigmented, water-soluble pearlescent colors. They come in a nice tin, and the pans are removable if you need to repurchase a particular color. The only issue is that the tin doesn't say what color is what, so... Only the box does. It doesn't even say anything on the pans themselves, so you can't really identify the colors. I did mess up the order of the gold swatches on the bottom row, so that's something to bear in mind. Going in the order of the palette, the first color is called Amethyst. This color is not super exciting. It didn't become very opaque and is a rather dull purple when it isn't reflecting light. The shimmer is a bright fuchsia purple, maybe a little bit more on the cool tone side. I found sapphire blue easier to make opaque, but it's not super exciting either. It's a slate blue that reflects a bright periwinkle. I find both this color and amethyst are prettier in the pan than on paper, but I might find I prefer them if I use them in a painting. Caribbean green is one of my favorites from this palette. It doesn't become very opaque, but the color of the shimmer is just so pretty. It's a cool mid-tone green that reflects this seafoam mint color, almost like an aqua blue. It dilutes very nicely in water, so you can achieve a nice, nearly streak-free gradient. Blue silver is a deeper, almost a charcoal gray compared to the gray of Windsor & Newton silver ink. They would probably look really nice layered on top of each other. It reflects a bright, almost white silver shimmer. Not the most exciting color, but I do really love grays. Is weird. It is by far my least favorite addition to this palette because it doesn't really do anything. I can see it's trying to reflect a bit of sparkle, but it just looks like a very, very slight sheen. It's slightly more opaque than most of the paints, but what really is the point? I can mix a nicer black with any of my watercolors or use ink, and then I can layer a diluted amount of any of the other colors on top. Mystic Color is a super weird color because I own eyeshadow that is this exact same shade. A few of them, actually. The maroon or burgundy that shifts to bright aqua or blue is one of the most basic duochromes in makeup. This is a really pretty version of it, more like a brick red that reflects aqua blue. This is also one of the more opaque colors in this entire palette. 
Pearl Silver is not terribly opaque, but it's definitely a very pretty layering color. The sparkle is definitely more apparent when it's over something dark. In low light, it's sort of a cream or a soft warm gray with a super bright silver white shimmer. Pearl Gold is a pretty basic gold color. It almost looks a bit orangey in low light, but it shimmers with a much brighter gold color. In texture, it feels creamier than the others, more metallic than in-your-face sparkly. Crystal Gold is super intense and another one of my favorites. It dilutes really nicely into a lovely gradient. It almost appears like a dull copper or a warm gold, but it shifts into this incredibly multi-dimensional bright lemon yellow that almost looks greenish. Orange Copper is kind of more orange than copper, but it is quite nice. It becomes fairly opaque and it also dilutes very nicely. I do find that it doesn't have much of a shift. A lot of the other colors are one color and then they sparkle with a different color. This one is just sort of like a deep orange that flashes a brighter orange. These last two are super similar. Red is a warm burgundy that flashes warm pink. It's almost like a light red more than a pink. Not quite a salmon pink, but pretty close. This is another one that can become pretty opaque pretty easily. Purple is almost identical to red. It looks like a duller burgundy shade, more brownish in comparison to red, with this magenta flash. To be honest, this one doesn't really feel purple, it's just slightly closer to pink than the red color is. I'm not going to go swatch by swatch of the Kuritake Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors palette, because chances are you've already seen it. A few months back, maybe even longer, they were popping up everywhere, even in art subscription boxes. But it is a nice palette, and I did want to include them for comparison, so you can see how much smoother they lay down than the Fine Tech palette. The Starry Colors palette is mica-based, I believe, though the box says they're water-based pigment. They don't come in the nicest packaging. The pans are plastic, but they're in a cardboard box but you can find them very affordably most anywhere, and the packaging is probably a huge factor. The pans are rectangular and very flat, unlike the textured round pans of the Fine Tech palette, but they're nice and big for using larger brushes. With all the swatches dried, I noticed my swatch of Copper Plate Gold is incredibly dull and not very sparkly. I pulled out a previous swatch I've done to compare, and I think I just didn't mix it well enough or something. A lot of the inks do need to be mixed really well because the glitter does settle at the bottom, and it also helps them be as opaque as they can be. Looking at all the finished swatches, it is crazy to me how much all of the golds can differ from one another. I would definitely recommend any of these inks and paints if you're looking to add gold to your collection. If you want a lot of variety, the Fine Tech Pearlescent Colors palette has a rainbow of options, but it is a bit more expensive, and it does have some great golden tones. If you just want gold, I would recommend the Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors palette. It's cheap, and it has some great variety. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I make new art videos every Friday. Also, please give me a thumbs up. It helps fight the YouTube algorithm and helps this channel grow. Have an awesome day. Bye!